Hey there. So I wanted to make a quick video on something that I've actually just learned about recently and I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't know about this sooner in my Blender career. And it got me thinking that I'm fairly certain most people don't actually know that this functionality exists within Core Blender already. Now, I am, of course, talking about preserving UVs, as is the title of this video. And if you're familiar with what that is and you just want the solution, feel free to go down into the timestamp below and just click on the solution segment of the video. Now, if you're not familiar with what preserving UVs are or why you should even care about it, that's what we're going to look at right now. So I've got this plain mesh in my 3D view here, and I've just unwrapped it to a standard procedural tiling texture. Now the key factor is, is that I'm using a tiling texture, uh, not using a unique texture or unique bakes. Uh, that's not something that this kind of functionality would be best for. It's mostly for tiling textures or trying to preserve UVs, which we'll, we'll see in a second. So if I go ahead and just start moving or transforming some of this geometry here, we'll see that I'm going to essentially stretch this UV because what it's doing, right, is it's still unwrapped in this zero to one space, but because I've actually moved the geometry in 3D, it's gonna have to stretch these texels here to make sure that it all fits within this geometry. And now in most cases, that's not what you're going to want it to do. Now you might also be familiar with edge sliding. So if I go and select this center edge loop here, and I just tap G twice, you can see that as I'm edge sliding, it's not actually doing any of that uh, stretching or that warping, right? And that's going to be a result of this little checkbox down here, this correct UVs. But by default, that's gonna be enabled. And in most instances, that's what you're gonna want. Now, unfortunately, one of the major issues with that is that we can't actually move this geometry outwards from the silhouette of this mesh here. So what I mean by that is if I hit G again, twice to do an edge slide, I'm, I'm limited to just staying within here, right? And same thing for this center vertex. If I hit G twice, right? I can only move along the edges here towards existing vertices. However, Blender actually has a solution to allow us to get the same preservation of UVs or correct UVs, but also go ahead and start manipulating our meshes to go beyond the extents of the original faces. So in my experimenting, I found that there's two different ways we can actually go about preserving UVs for our meshes. The first way is probably going to be the most straightforward way. So I'm in edit mode here, and if I hit N on my keyboard to bring up our side shelf or side panel here, I want to navigate to the tool panel here. And under the options header, we're going to find this transform option. And within that transform option, we're going to have this correct face attributes checkbox. So if I enable this, and I'll just hide our shelf there, now when I come over and I move these vertices here, just on the X, you can see that it's not stretching anymore, but it's actually updating the UVs pretty much in our UV space. So when I go ahead and just commit this, you can see what it's done is it's actually taken the UVs and pushed them off of the zero to one space. And that's why it's important that uh, really you're only going to be doing this for the most part with tiling textures because it's actually updating your UV space here. So you're going to want something that's actually repeating. And then when you're satisfied with that and you want to do some just regular movements without preserving the UVs, you can just come back into your panel here, turn this off, and then go back to your editing. So that's pretty cool, but Maybe you don't want to come back in and out and turning on and off that option all the time, even as easy as it might be. So Blender actually has a pretty cool option. And this is how I initially accidentally found out about this functionality is if we recall, right? Hitting G once is to move. Hitting G a second time is for edge slide. And if I actually hit G a third time, you can see that it's going to, and I'm just going to constrain it to the X axis here, do that preserve UV slide or correct face attributes or whatever that option is. So it's going to basically temporarily enable that functionality for this movement. So if I go ahead and confirm that and I just go and select everything in my UV just to update and refresh the UI, you can see that it's updated there. 
But now if I go ahead and hit G again, and I'm just going to constrain it to the X, you can see it's a regular movement or transformation of our 3D mesh. And now finally, before I close this video out, I just wanted to show you that you can really do this for any types of mesh data, right? So I can go ahead and triple tap G here for our vertex and move that around. I can do the same thing for our edges. And finally, I can do that with our face selection.